you ever thought about what it would feel like to travel and live abroad for a year? I do think about it every once in a while, and I don't know if I, in particular, would ever want to do that, per se. Maybe like a residence, like in terms of doing like an artist res residence or something like that, or like kind of going on like an adventure for a couple weeks. But I, I just, I can't see myself living in a completely different place for a long time. And that's just because, like, I just prefer to have, like, kind of like a home base in a way. Like a place I can always go back to, lounge and relax. And I don't know if I'd ever feel that way if I knew that I was on a timeline in terms of wanting to move back to wherever I live. Anyways, that's just a random little musing. Hello, everybody. This is That Manga Dude. And welcome to a Manga Recommendations video. So, today, I will be talking about 12... 10, 12, <laughs> 12 different manga series that there are short series uh, that I think you should read right now. This summer, right now, whenever you're reading this, you should go check these out. So my criteria for this video, one, there are no one shots. So any series that is completed within one volume is not going to be on here uh, because I feel like that's its own list and there are a ton of fantastic one shots out there uh, but I feel like like I said uh, that's for a different list for a different time this list only contains series that are one or that are two to five volumes uh, five volumes is the max so if you're seeing if you're wondering like oh where is this series that's like six volumes or uh, something like that it's probably why and yes there are series that I did leave off off here because I feel like this video could be unbelievably long uh, so I, I chose 12 uh, that I think like anybody and a lot of people should definitely check out for sure uh, there are a couple other ones I think maybe for another video uh, we'll see down the line uh, <laughs> but until then let's talk about these 12 series right now let's go Okay, so the first series I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be from our good friend Tsuyoshi Takaki Sensei. This is Black Torch Volume. Uh, there are five volumes specifically for this series, and I'll give you a quick little synopsis about it before I give you my full opinion. So, although he may appear rough and tumble, Jiro Azuma's cat compassionate side emerges when it comes to the furry critters he communicates with. But Jiro's soft spot for animals gets him in major trouble when a suspicious stray cat fuses with him, granting him an exception power but also dragging him into humanity's hidden battle against powerful Japanese spirits also known as Mononoke. So um, this is a really flippin' cool series and one that I love to talk about all the time just because one, I think it's really cool and completely underrated, at least in terms of uh, releases from Viz Media and Shonen Jump's uh, imprint, uh, because it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's it's just non-stop, good times. The art is absolutely fantastic. There's some really, really flippin' cool stuff, even within the first volume. A lot of great action shots. Tsuyoshi Takaki uh, was really killing it with this, with this series, and unfortunately, I believe it got cancelled, if I remember correctly, so it's only five volumes, but I really do think um, Tsuyoshi Takaki kind of has a great idea of what they want to do with their uh, next future series, which Heart Gear is also out as well, uh, but that one is currently releasing, and I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, five or six volumes, so I did not include it, but Black Torch, definitely worth it, it's a lot of fun, um, yeah, definitely go check it out. All right, next on this list is going to be Astra, Lost in Space from Kenta Shinohara. This is volume one, and there are five volumes for this series. Here is a quick synopsis. In the year 2063, space travel is feasible and commercially available. As a cheerful heiress spring uh, arrives at the spaceport to attend a camp on the distant planet MCPA, her purse is suddenly snatched by a reckless thief. Luckily, the athletic Kanata Hoshijima is able to retrieve it for her, and Aries soon discovers that he is among the group of teenagers who will be traveling with her on the excursion as Team B5. Upon arriving at their cramp their campsite, the group's trip takes a turn for the worse when a strange spear of black light sucks them into the vast reaches of outer space. Stranded with seemingly no hope, they find an abandoned ship nearby that provides them with the means to return home. However, they soon discover that they are not as close to their campsite as they initially thought, but are in fact thousands of light years away from home. So this is a really interesting series uh, and it does a really good job with how many volumes it does have. Um, this is uh, the mangaka Kenta Shinohara who is known for a series called Sket Dance which we have never received in English unfortunately and I believe also Witch Watch which is a currently releasing Shonen Jump series uh, that is being released digitally from Viz Media. But this is a pretty awesome short little series and I think what, what makes it so much fun to read is just how well it pulls in all these different kinds of elements uh, and makes it work because this series has a lot of things going on. It's a sci-fi series, it's a meta commentary, comedy, um, there's kind of drama, there's also a uh, a hint of mystery going on as well as uh, like as well as like a thriller kind of thing um it's a really cool series 
I think it does uh, a lot of things very well. Like I said, uh, the characters are really fun to read about. I think the story is pretty interesting as well. Uh, this kind of getting lost in space, as the name suggests, and uh, trying to survive uh, by going to various planets. So it's just like a really fun little adventure uh, as well. So there's, there's just a lot in this one specifically, but I think it's done really well, written really well, and I think it's definitely worth giving it a shot. So if you get the chance, go check this one out. All right, number three, we have ourselves Call the Name of the Night from Tama Mitsuboshi. Uh, this is one of my favorite currently releasing series, and uh, there is only one more volume left to be released. There are five volumes total for this series, um, and it's fairly new. So let's give you some good old-fashioned information about it. Deep in the forest, a curious pair resides. A young girl, Mira, whose affliction leads her to call forth darkness whenever she's in distress, and her physician, Ray, determined to seek a cure. Each day, she works to remember the, the light and bring back the person she used to be. But a sudden visit from Ray's friend, who harbors an interest in Mira's illness, may be the end of their peaceful days. So that's the synopsis specifically for volume one. Uh, but overall, this series is so amazing. I love this series quite a bit. It's a wonderful uh, kind of like high fantasy, slice of life, almost coming of age series um, that tackles a lot of really interesting topics and themes, but done in like kind of like this uh, fantastical and whimsical way, um, allowing it to be a little bit more digestible than just kind of like uh, shooting you with a bunch of text and stuff like that. So uh, I think the way they tackle social anxiety and like um, how you can like... Uh, really get FOMO or feel disconnected from things and how you try to find that spark for life again. Uh, I don't know. It just does it very beautifully and the art is absolutely gorgeous. This cover does the series quite a bit of justice because it is just as beautiful on the inside that it is on this cover here. So if you're a big fan of like Witch Head Atelier, um, this is another fantastic series that's uh, in that same kind of vein of really gorgeous high fantasy slash fantasy series. Uh, I would say give this a shot. It's really, really good. Up next, we have ourselves a Slice of Life series. This is Days on Fess uh, from Kanato Oka. So this is a five volume series that is a lot of fun, honestly. I, I think it's uh, got a very nice, light-hearted tone. Let me give you a description really quick. We have ourselves, Kanade Sora has never been to a music festival before, but when her friend Otoha lures her along with the promise of that her favorite band will be playing, she finds herself having more fun than she ever imagined. And if one small show is enough to hook her, what might a huge overnight event at a major venue be like? As Kanade dives into a whole new world of rocking out, Will her life ever be the same? So this one, like I said, is a lot more lighthearted. It's very simple. It's very fun. Uh, it really invokes that like enjoyment of going to music festivals, of going to bands, going to see bands in concert, seeing them live. Um, while it's mixing in just some little extra like tidbits and stuff like that. So I think it's really well done. It's really light. It's really fluffy. It's just a good time from start to finish. You're going to enjoy yourself. If you really like live music and uh, want a manga that's all about that kind of stuff, this is a great series to check out. Um, are you going to be like completely blown away by anything like a crazy story? No, but it doesn't need to have a crazy story. Uh, <laughs> so definitely give this one a shot if you're looking for a fun music manga all about festivals. All right, up next, we have ourselves Mame Coordinate. Uh, this is volume one from Sachi Miyabe. There are four volumes of this series uh, from Tokyo Pop. And let me give you a quick description of this one. She loves meat and fried foods and eats only karage bento. Wearing exclusively clothes with weird characters printed on them, her fashion sense is practically non-existent. No confidence in her own looks, extreme social anxiety. She speaks with a country drawl, and even her name is unusual. But then Mame, who's the main character here, from born in Tokyo. Tory Prefecture was discovered by an intimidating, bespect uh, bespectacled <laughs> rookie manager and now begins the arduous task of getting her ready for auditions. The road to top model looks awfully steep from here. So as you could tell from that description, this is a series all about modeling um, and about clothing and kind of just about like being a creative in a uh, male dominated space as well. Um, so our main character, she's very quirky, she's very awkward, but I just love her character progression throughout the series uh, as she starts to gain more confidence in herself and uh, kind of spreads that like love uh, for fashion to the people around her so it's a really great series honestly I think it's really well done 
just the characters are all very relatable, um, like totally understanding like the FOMO, totally understanding the imposter syndrome, uh, f fighting against like the norm, the status quo. It's just great. It's really, really great. There's just so much to love about this series and it's only four volumes so you're not going to be uh, having to dish out a ton for a longer series but I love this one. If you're looking for a good series about fashion, this is great. All right, up next, this is an older series, so this might be a little bit harder to find, but if you can find it, it's definitely worth a shot, and it's one of my fiance's favorite series. Uh, this is Angelic Lair from Clamp. So there are five volumes of this series out, at least for the Tokyo Pop release. Uh, I don't remember if Dark Horse released it. Somebody else released it, uh, but it hasn't been released in a while, but this is a really fun one. So let me give you a quick description of this one. In the future, the most popular game in the world is Angelic Lair. Contestants must raise and train their own angels, or fighting dolls, so these things here, to compete in tournaments. Enter Misaki Suzuhara, sixth grade Angelic Lair prodigy, with her speed type angel Hikaru. Many people think Misaki stands a chance at winning the championship. She'll have a lot of help along the way, but the road to victory will not be an easy route, especially for someone as young as Misaki. Ooh. So this is just a really fun uh, action series. Uh, if you really like, like robots fighting, like, host, like custom robo, like metabots and stuff like that, this is another great one uh, to add to that like collection. The art is great, as always you would expect from Clamp. Um, the action is a ton of fun. The characters are hilarious. And like, um, yeah, it's just a very uh, quick and easy and uh, just very entertaining action series. So if you're looking for a fun one that's like basically just one giant tournament arc, you should give this a shot. We have officially reached the halfway point, or just past the halfway point, so going into the next volume, we have ourselves Satoko and Nada from Yupechika, with a script advising from Marie Nishimori. This is an absolutely lovely, fun slice of life series that you can learn a lot from. Uh, so let me give you a quick description. So Satoko, who is Japanese, has a new roommate in America, a Saudi Arabian woman named Nada, who practices Islam and wears a hijab. While under the same roof, Satoko and Nada learn how to live together with very uh, different customs and still have all the fun young women crave through mutual respect and the hilarious adventures of their daily life Satoko and Nada prove that friendship knows no borders so kind of like what the description was saying by the way all these descriptions are usually coming from the back of the book so <laughs> if you're wondering why they seem uh, pretty straightforward and uh, I'm kind of struggling with kind of saying them it's because yeah like I didn't write these these are all from the backs of the books so um, thank you to whoever wrote them I appreciate it, it makes my life a lot easier but Stoko and uh, Stoko and Nada is a really fun series honestly I wasn't expecting to enjoy myself as much as I did but it's also extremely educational as well I learned a lot about Japanese and Saudi Arabian culture I got to learn a lot about the different kind of like face coverings that various parts of Islam uh, practice and just like the the practice of a Saudi and Arabian woman as well. You could really tell that Yupichika put a lot of emphasis and a lot of focus on uh, making sure that everything was accurate, was correct, uh, and um actually was like kind of interesting as well. Um, I think like the story is also told pretty well. Even though it is a very educational manga, I think it really helps uh, that the story itself is actually pretty interesting as we get to learn more about uh, Nada's background and uh, her life as she proceeds to grow up as well as Satoko's life. Uh, and kind of like interesting stories about their backgrounds and where they're from and what is going on with their families and things like that. So it's a great series. It's a four volume series, nothing too crazy. And I think you will enjoy it from start to finish. All right, coming up next, we have ourselves The Golden Sheep from Kaori Ozaki. This is a three volume series. And let me read that description for you. They say, if you write down your wish, bury it under sheep tower and then dig it up after seven years and seven months, your wish will come true. Sugu Mikura, a high schooler has moved back to her rural town where she spent her childhood. She begins to reconnect with her old friend group but finds that the friendships they had built are now frayed and changed in various ways. Can Sugu find a way to rekindle the bonds they used to have? So this was a really interesting like kind of like um coming of age story just from start to finish. Uh it's really short like I said it's only three volumes but um yeah some great characters some pretty um uh, interesting developments as we move throughout the series and I think it ends in a nice way just in general. Uh if you want to character who's really focused on music and kind of like trying to push uh, where she wants to be and uh, really pushing others to I guess be better across the board. I think this is a great series. Kaori Ozaki is really good at making these like series where characters are uh, kind of just living their lives, sometimes in very difficult situations, specifically in Golden Sheep, and I think it's definitely worth it. This is a really, really good read um, from start to finish. 
volumes there's only three volumes so <laughs> you don't have to be super uh locked in you don't have to spend a ton of money so this one is really good and uh the art is great all right coming up next we have ourselves a school frozen in time from naoshi arakawa and mizuki sujimura so yeah this is a four volume series and let me give you a quick description on a snowy school day like any other classmates and childhood friends hiroshi and mizuki arrive at school to find the campus eerily empty before long they find themselves trapped inside with six other friends and even stranger all the clocks have stopped at a very specific moment the exact time when a former class name jumped off the school roof to their death three months earlier it turns out that this departed friend is their way out of their current predicament and may even be among their group but no one can remember who it was that took their life on that sad day the students must face themselves and their past memories to piece together the identity of this person or risk a similar fate with their lives lost and forgotten inside these frigid school walls so um Features art from Naoshi Arakawa, who, if you don't know, is the mangaka behind your line April. Um, the artist did not do any of the stories, so um, you get to read you get to read an interesting story not done by Arakawa um, himself. So overall, it's a really interesting um, like mystery thriller. There's a lot of really great moments that'll have you shocked in awe. Um, the art, of course, is really good, especially if you like Arakawa's work. And yeah, I think overall it's a it's a pretty fun one to try to figure out the mystery. Uh, that gets built from the first volume and then ending in a very interesting final volume and yeah Features some cool little color pages as well. It's a great series and I really like it. So you should give it a shot All right, we're coming into our last three and probably some of my favorites to be honest out of this entire stack We are ourselves my favorite manga from 2022 coming in is lost lad London This is from Shima Shinya. It is only three volumes and let me give you a quick description the whole of london is shocked when the mayor is found dead on an underground train and but perhaps more none more than university student al adley though he took the tube at the time of the fatal shooting he doesn't remember seeing anything unusual certainly nothing to explain how a bloody knife found its way into his pocket that night However, in spite of this damning evidence, Detective Ellis believes Al's claims of innocence. Now the two must work together to conceal Al's involvement and clear his name in the face of shadowy forces working to see Al take the fall for a crime he didn't commit. So, as you could tell, I really like mystery things. This is a really, really great murder mystery series. It's only three volumes. It features a wonderful cast of diverse characters. And the main characters are uh, obviously people of color, which is always great to see, um, especially from like a Japanese manga series which is not usually the case too often so uh really cool to see that and they're all written extremely well no no stereotypes were used which is always really appreciated uh, a lot of very interesting characters the story is pretty intense from start to finish um so just some really interesting story plot elements as well it gets really complicated and not in a bad way either it gets really complicated in terms of like what is going on specifically why they're trying to blame it on this guy here so uh overall it's a fantastic series i loved it so much and if you're looking for a series that has a really unique art style, Shima Shinya has such an interesting uh, and fun art style. Probably one of my favorites that is currently releasing, uh, or at least one of my favorite manga artists currently working, because uh, there's another series that they have out called Glitch, which uh, I would have suggested, but I'm not sure how long that series is going to be, so I could not uh, put it in this video with good conscience. But Lost Lab London, fantastic, really good, uh, just Really good mystery thriller. Love it a lot. Definitely give it a shot. All right, coming up next, we have ourselves Run Away With Me Girl from Bataan. This is a three volume series and it's, oh, it's a tear jerker. It's a heart wrencher, but let me give you a quick description. You know that one person you just can't forget, not the one that got away, but the one you had until suddenly you didn't. Maki's first love was her high school classmate, a girl named Midori. But Midori broke up with Maki at graduation, saying they were now too old to be fooling around dating girls. Ten years later, Maki still can't get Midori off her mind, and when the two women reconnect after a chance encounter, Maki realizes that, while her feelings haven't changed, Midori has long moved on. In fact, she's engaged. Yet the more Maki hears Midori talk about her soon-to-be husband, the more red flags she notices. And Midori has another secret, and one that she hasn't shared with Maki. Will it be the last blow to Maki's hopes that their romance might be rekindled, or will it be the push that sets them on a new path? One, they'll travel together. So, it's a very heart-wrenching and just very... Uh, really well written story um, love the characters I love the art style the art style is so unique and beautiful um, 
just a lot of really well done emotional moments. I think Bataan really understands how to create some pretty amazing characters and also some characters you're really gonna hate on purpose and I think are really good for helping to drive the narrative where it needs to go. I would highly suggest this series if you're looking for a uh, very bittersweet series um, that ends uh, really well. I think it does a great job of wrapping everything up within three volumes and uh, just an absolutely lovely romance series. It's really good. I just li I like it a lot. It's very good. And last but not least, we have ourselves Boys Run the Riot from Keito Gaku. This is a four volume series. And let me give you a quick description. We have ourselves high schooler. Ryo knows he's transgender, but he doesn't have anyone to confide in about the confusion he feels. He can't tell his best friend who he secretly got a crush on. And he can't tell his mom who's constantly asking why Ryo dresses like a boy. He certainly can't tell Jin, the new transfer student who looks just like another bully. The only time Ryo feels at ease is when he's wearing his favorite clothes. Then, and only then, the world melts away and he can be his true self. One day, while out shopping, Ryo sees someone he doesn't expect. Jin, the kid who looks so tough in class, has the same taste in fashion as him. At last, Ryo has someone he can open up to, and the journey ahead might finally give him a way to express himself to the world. So this is a really, really amazing series. Um, stars an amazing cast uh, just across the board. The main character is awesome, and you're always going to be rooting for him throughout this entire story. Uh, a lot of great moments that just, ah, it's just so easy to root for him. Um, and just, I love how this series, like, takes like such an important uh, I think important discussion about transgender uh, characters and transgender uh, like transgender and how that's seen by the I say like overall world uh, and how he pushes himself to be uh, the best that he can be uh, eventually finding his true self by the end of the series and uh, just awesome ah, it's just so awesome I don't know <laughs> it's really difficult to talk about uh, really difficult to explain how good this series is like I said it's only four volumes so um, it's gonna be wrapped up in a nice little bow by the end of it and you're going to be rooting for the main cast throughout this entire series it's a lot of fun the art is good as well and just really good at pushing a uh, fantastic or like creating a fantastic narrative and a fantastic um, just overall it's just, I don't know, like everything that's built up is fantastic. I love the fashion. I think it's really fun. Uh, really cool to see your series all about street fashion. So yeah, I can't wait to see what Keito Gaku does next. And that is going to be it for my good old-fashioned manga recommendations. I had a great time talking about these series, uh, especially because I, I I think all these series are worth taking a shot at, like they're worth taking a read because they're all different. They're all very different. <laughs> I would say there's only a couple of series that I would say are similar, and even then I wouldn't say they're that similar other than like, oh, maybe there's some of them are in fashion, and oh, some of them feature like female main characters. But like other than that, yeah, like the series are very different. They're very unique, and uh, I love them all a lot. So you should go give them a shot. And I'm going to ask you this. What of these series have you, or which of these series have you read? Do you like any of these series? Have you uh, checked out any of these series before? Let me know how you feel about them in the comments below. And my other question is, uh, what are some short series that are five volumes or less that you think people should, ch should check out right now? Let me know in the comments below as well. And that's going to do it for this video. So you know what to do. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. Those are all amazing things. Those are awesome things. And I really love it when people People suggest things in the comments or I uh, love it when people support whatever they want to do you guys are awesome you all make this so much fun to do and you can also join the membership to get these videos a little bit early so I uh, appreciate Reg C. Lee for your continued support as a member a loyal member you are awesome you are amazing and yeah that's gonna be it so I will see you in the next video you yeah you you right there <laughs> all right bye bye